Hi guys, welcome to another Divi theme video. This is Jamie from System22 and webdesignandtechtips.com. Well, we've been putting together this little one page site here. We've done the hero section, the about us, services, team, projects, testimonials, portfolio. And in our last video, we did a icon list. In this video, we're gonna add the actual contact form and configure it. So let's get started. Here's the site we were working on. If I roll down. This is where we left off yesterday with our little icon list here. So I'm going to enable the visual builder. And once enabled, go down to where we want to work. And I've got a title there in one row, and then I've got a second row with a slightly smaller column on the left and a larger one on the right. I'm going to add our contact module to the one on the right here. Hit the little dark plus button there, and let's add a contact form. There it is right there. Simply going to left click, and it's going to pop in. And as you can see by default, it puts in a name, email, and a message field. You can give your form a title if you want to. I'm not going to do that. A title would appear up there if I just put one in. You can see it appears at the top there. And like any other title, you can style it how you want. I don't want that for mine. But I do want it to display a success message when we send it. So let's say something like message sent. Or whatever it is you want them to see when they submit the form. Down now you've got your... Submit button, I'm happy with mine to say submit, but if you want it to say something else, you just put it in there. As you can see, that's changed that to send now. I'm gonna leave mine on the default, I quite like submit. Down below, here's the important one, where you actually want this form to be sent. So you wanna put the email address you want this form sent to in here, so it's me at myemail.com, or whatever your email address is. Message pattern, I'm gonna leave it just as it is. If you wanted to redirect them to another page or something like that after they sent it, you can do that here by enabling this, hitting the little switch there and putting the URL of where you want to take them up there, whether it's another page or the top of this page. I'm going to leave mine to off because I just wanted to say message sent and keep them exactly where it is. Now down below we've got spam protection. That's a basic capture there if I open this up. You can turn it on and off if you want to, if you're getting spam. It's a good idea to leave it off. If not, I'm going to turn it off like that. You can use a third party one like Google Capture or something like that. You'd have to put in an API key. But I'm happy. We're just having none at the moment. Basic Capture seems to work pretty well too. Don't want to link this to anything. Don't really want a background. So let's say you want to add a few more fields. I'm quite happy with the way that is, but you may want to add a few more fields like a subject or a telephone or something like that. To do that, we can just roll back up to the top and hit the add new field button. If you want to delete one of these, just hit the trash can right there. Let's say we want to add a subject field. So let's say subject. And I'll also give it a title. As you can see, it's put it in down here. Now you've got options here. You can choose the type of field that it is. It can be an info, input field, a field to put in your email address, like we've already got one of those there, text area, check boxes, radio buttons, or a drop down. I'll keep it as an input field. You can choose maximum length and minimum length up here. And you can choose which symbols are allowed. For instance, if this is a subject field, perhaps numbers and letters, which would be alphanumeric, if it was a phone type field, it would be numbers only. And you can make it required or not by clicking that little switch right there. I'm not gonna go into conditional logic. Conditional logic is a great thing. You can have it if they answer this question and another one will pop up. I've made a whole video on that just on its own. Great, so when you're happy with your little new field, just hit the little check button, goes back to the main settings, and you can left click and drag it wherever you want it. So 
put it just above the message field. Now perhaps if you wanted to put a, a shorter one in there, what you can do is you can go in there to whatever field you want, go into the design, into the layout, You've got make full width, or if you turn it off, it's going to make it half the width and you can put another field in next door if you want to. For a subject line, I'm happy for that to be full width. Great. Well, I'm happy for that with our little for our little contact form here. So we're back in the main form settings here. We can go into our design and you can style your fields however you want. Background color, text color, focus focus text color, fields margin if you want to spread them out or make them in closer together if you want to. Padding Font styles, as with Divi, you've got a crazy amount of fonts. To audition one, just roll over it and it will give you an example of that font. I'm going to leave mine all on the default today. And of course you can adjust all the regular things like letter spacing, line height, text shadow if you want it. Had you had a title, you can style the title here and all the regular text there. And if you keep the capture down there, you can style that right here. But as we're not using that, let's just move on to our button. I want to make our button a little more personal here, keeping with the rest of our site. So I'm going to hit the Use Custom Styles for Button. And we're in the main module settings in the Design tab, down to the button. I'm going to put, pop this one on. Okay, text size is actually fine. I'm going to turn it to white though, text color. It'll disappear on our white background there. We've been using sort of blues and purples for our theme here. So I'm going to keep it to that. I'm going to go down to button background and let's perhaps start off with it being blue. And then when we hover over it, I want it to turn purple. And this is common to all Divi modules. If you roll over something, you'll see some little icons appear. Go up to the thing that you want to affect, in our case, the button background. Go over if there's a little arrow, just click on it. You can set a desktop color, which basically is when your mouse is not on it. Then when they put their mouse on it, you've got a hover state right here. I'm going to make it purple when we hover over it. Great, that works for me. Now rolling on down, you can choose well a different font if you want to for the button, but I'm going to leave mine just as it is. You can choose to show a button icon. There's plenty to choose from. Let's say send. And the default is to have it only show when you hover over it. If you want it there all the time, we can roll down. Let's give it a white color. I'm happy for it to be on the right hand side. I want it to show all the time. So only show icon on hover. I want to turn that to off. As you can see, it's added it for us there. So we've got it all the time. I am going to add a little bit of text shadow. Just helps it stand out slightly more on that button there. And I kind of like to have rounded corners. So if you want rounded corners, we can roll up the border radius up here. Button border radius. And let's give it a fairly high value, say 30 pixels. And I give it right nice round corners there. There we go. A little bit too cramped up between my icon and the text. I'd like to see it a bit wider. So we can do that by adding a bit of padding. If we roll down, we've got margin and padding down here. Now margin will actually move it. If you want more space on the top, give it some margin and it'll push it down. As you can see, that's dropped down. Let's make mine about 30. So I might give these forms a bit of box shadow just to offset them a little bit. And padding, this is how you make your button taller or wider. For instance, if I put 30 pix padding on the top, you'll see it becomes a lot deeper. If you want to do the same on the bottom, just hit the chain and it comes crazy deep. I'm happy with the actual size it was there. So I'm going to add just a little bit more to the left and right. Let's try a 30 left and right. See that's added a little bit more to the left there. Hit the chain. Put 30 on the right. Because we've got that little icon there, we probably need to change that. So uncheck the chain because that'll make them both the same there. Let's add maybe 20 pixels. Yeah, that works for me. Obviously you make it your own. And just to offset it, I'm going to add a little bit of box shadow. Now there's a little white line there. That's going to be our border. 
So if I take that away, the box shadow will be on the button. So we can roll up back where we were with our border just now. Button border width. To take that away, you can either make it the same color and you'd have to do the same for the hover effect or just take it away. I'm gonna take mine away by putting that down to zero. Fantastic. Great, well, I'm happy with the way the button is working now. Let's move on down and just to finish off, I'm going to go down to box shadow and I'm going to give it a bit of box shadow on our fields there. And that just lifts it off the page a little bit. And we're good to go. Let's save our changes here. Just see how it's going to look on the front end. Hit the little purple button, save draft or publish if you're ready. And we'll exit the visual builder. Go on down to where we were working. And there's our little contact form. You can fill it out, put a subject in, message in, and submit it where you're ready. As you can see, when we roll over that button, it changes to purple. So there you go, guys. There's how to add the contact form to our contact section. We've got one more section to go, a live full width Google map. Once we've done that, we'll add a footer, we'll add a menu so we can hook all these sections together, just like in the new one. So I hope you've enjoyed this today and found it useful. If you have, please give it a thumbs up, ring the bell, comment, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Don't forget, if you've got any questions, drop them down below. I'll do my best to answer them for you. Once again, this has been Jamie with System22 and WebDesignAndTechTips.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.